Just a quick introduction, I'm Zai, I've been playing Quake for over 19 years, and given that it's a game that makes use of all base aim styles, I've been able to get a good grasp of what mice work and what ones have potential problems. I've now tested over 100 mice, and I've been reviewing them for over 2 years. This is what 115 mice looks like. I have to say, we are getting some amazing mice now. Structuring the top 20 has never been so difficult, especially because any one of these mice I'm about to mention could be your top choice. So to start this, please don't worry about the number too much. Look for the mouse that's right for you. To make the list, I looked at a lot of factors like sensor, weight, shape, balance, performance, buttons, extra features, and more, but it's still up to you what is best. For each mouse, I'll leave a link to my review in the description and comment section. Make a mental note or write it down. Size is really important, and I recommend using smaller mice if you want to aim your best. That means if you have a large hand, you'd want to use a medium-large mouse, so one size down. But I do recommend doing it by measurements instead, so it's about 60% of your hand dimensions when measuring like this. It seems the length of a mouse is more important for grip style, but generally, we want it to be twice as long as it is wide. That's for the 2 to 1 ratio, which makes it a good balance. A final note on the following mice, they all have excellent button response time and sensor performance, so I'm not going to repeat myself on that. You can assume almost everything is perfect with the mice. I'm just going to talk about a few important factors for each. The details are in the full reviews. Okay, let's begin. At number 20, the G900 or G903. Logitech Wireless is amazing and just like a wired mouse, so don't let that put you off. These are actually my most used mice, for general use on the web, in casual gaming, or especially when I'm editing videos. The Infinite Scroll Wheel makes editing so much easier going through the timeline. Unfortunately, the shape and weight don't really make it ideal for competitive play. We're still missing a mouse the size of the Abyssus, but with side buttons. But for a lightweight, small, medium gaming mouse, this is a great option for now. The sensor could be better, but I played really well with it. I actually wouldn't mind using it in competition either. Razer have stepped up their quality with the latest mice though. There are so many things to like about the Lancet. Unfortunately, the shape is a bit odd toward the back, and like the Basilisk, it is a bit heavy. Everything else is pretty much perfect. Speaking of the Basilisk, it's a bit higher on the list because it's quite comfortable. It's like a more comfortable G502, with all the quality improvements of the Lancet. Also a bit heavy, and the reason I say it's a bit heavy, is because most competitive players prefer mice under 100 grams. The Rival 110 still doesn't have the quality of its bigger brother, but with the new sensor, this mouse is one of the best medium options. It's good, not great, but the sensor is close to a 3330, so it's like a 3360. Definitely worth a look. The MM530 is basically a new version of the Alcor, but with a lot of improvements. This should have been higher on the list, but the shape can only take it so far, so I really hope they give this sort of treatment to the Master Mouse S because that would be a top 5 option. Now, because research and development costs a lot, I'm not favouring my set of clones anymore. The Revel is like the SteelSeries Sensei, but without the slight hump on the sides, so it's a bit smaller. Everything else is pretty much right though, and it's just like the Dream Machine's DM1 Pro S. And this is why I don't want to encourage clones, because now we have 14 and 13, basically the same mouse. If you want to Sensei shape with the top sensor and side buttons on the left only, then the Nixius Revel or Dream Machine Steam 1 Pro S are great picks. Really enjoyed using both these mice, and I'm not sure which one I'd pick, but maybe the DM1 because it has slightly better build quality in some ways. People seem to either love or hate the shape of the Rocket Comb Pure. If this shape suits you, then it's a top pick. There are a lot of things that are right about this mouse, although I found the quality on this one wasn't as high as the military version. It just has a better sensor in it. Again with the Logitech Wireless with the G403 or G703. Weight matters a lot, so that's why this isn't higher on the list. If I was going to choose a wireless gaming mouse at the moment though, either of these would be it. Get the G703 if you want to use PowerPlay technology, where you can charge it through the mouse pad, or if you might do that in the future. Otherwise, it's basically the same as the G403, so either are good. A classic at number 10, the Logitech Pro G102 or G203. To clarify, there isn't meant to be any difference between the G102 or G203. It's just meant to be sold in different regions. I've heard the sensor isn't meant to be as good as the G Pro, but in my testing, it performed the same. So if you want the best sensor, get the G Pro. But if you really can't stand the thick braided cable, then you might want to consider the other two options, which have a smoother cable. The return of the sensor came in 2017, and it is really good. There are a few things that don't feel quite as good, the shape being a tiny bit awkward with some extra angles. But overall, with the 3360 base sensor, it's a worthy successor and deserves to be at number 9. Personally, I use Zowie mice most for gaming. The shapes and balance along with the different size options, they're amazing. You can usually find a mouse by them that's right for your hand size. The ZA13 is the smallest, ZA11 is the biggest. That said, this series just does not feel right in my hand. It's the bulge toward the back, 
I guess it feels a palm more, but for me, it just feels a bit awkward. I know people love these mice and they're still very good, so they still rank highly, but not quite as high as the other Zowie mice. The Ninox Venator is basically a better shaped ZA13. Yeah, I didn't expect that either. Zowie have better subtle curves, but overall, I prefer using the Venator. It's also lighter and has a better sensor. Personally, this is one of my top mice because it suits my hand size. Definitely worth checking out. The Revenger S is Cougar's claim to fame in the top mice list. They listened to community feedback, and even made some changes based on things I said about the Revenger. Great shape, top sensor, relatively lightweight, this is a great large mouse. Possibly the best selling mouse out of all of them, Razor remains steady with the Death Adder Elite. It has almost everything right, just some quality improvements could be made, and even some minor changes to make the shape more comfortable. Still, if you have a large hand, this is possibly the safest choice. The rival from Steel Series was one of my favourite shapes. I just wanted it to be smaller and lighter. And that's what we got with the Rival 310. Also an upgraded sensor. This is a special shape and loved by many. They really upped their game with their latest generation of mice. Great to see them back. And I love the Rival 310 even though it's slightly too big for my hand. The first mouse to make me say wow was the Zowie EC2A. The shape just felt so good, along with the balance and sensor. I saw a huge improvement in my aim, which is amazing because it's actually too big for my hand. I want to try an EC3A one day. But this isn't about the ECA range, this is about the ECB. It's basically the same, but it now has a 3360 sensor in it, the top optical around. I've made a changes video you can watch for the rest, but it's the sensor that made me replace the ECA series on this list. Also check the EC white review for all the measurements and other details of the mice. The FK2 is currently my number one mouse. The sensor is still the 3310, so if you have issues with Tilt Slam, you might want to avoid this for now, or until you correct your technique. Just quickly, Tilt Slam can be shown when you hold the mouse on its side, and then slam it down fast. If it spins out, it's most likely one of the older sensors. That's one reason to move to the 3360 and a couple of others. However, most people don't have that problem. I've never had it, so I'm happy to continue using the FK2. The subtle curves and slim design, along with the low weight, makes me feel like I'm in complete control while playing. It even made me change from palm to fingertip grip, and somehow, the buttons on the right don't get in my way. At this stage, it's definitely one of the best around, with the FK2 being smallest, FK1 being medium, and FK1 Plus being large. And still number one since it was released, the Logitech G403. For a medium large to large mouse, I actually feel in control and able to aim it. And I've heard from people with bigger hands that it's amazing. It has almost everything right with only a few issues, like the cable being a bit too thick. The shape also isn't quite right at first, despite seeming safe. Once you adjust though, I would assume you will love it too. That's a good reminder though, not every shape is going to work for your hand. So if you find the right mouse for you, even though the G403 is number one, you might suit the Rival 310 at number four, or the Rockout Comb Pure at number 12. All of these mice are really good. We've never had so many good mice to choose from, and it looks like we're just going to get more, even better mice in the future. Exciting times ahead, so make sure you subscribe for all the latest reviews. And if you want to help support the channel, I'll leave some links in the description. The community has been awesome in their support, so I just want to say a big thank you to them for all the love. I definitely couldn't do this without you. Just back on mice real quick, some people think that the sensor is going to be the most important factor, but I would recommend you focus on shape and weight. With all the top sensors around at the moment, they're the more important factors. Also, I I haven't tested every mouse out there. If you want to see the mice I've tested, you can check my website. Congratulations to all the companies that made the top 20. They've done extremely well. Hope the list helped. Thanks for watching, and as always, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.